You are listening to the Reraceables podcast. Welcome back to the Reraceables podcast. I'm your host Tom here with Josh and Nicole. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you. How's it going? Good. I feel the need to hurry up and get right into it. We just saw a rickshaw race, but before we get there, um, we have to start with the gray team, Stephen Annerley. Uh, this might be the most egg on our face, perhaps ever. Um, but I apologized to her via Instagram this past week. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. So that that's two of us. Have you done so as well, Josh? No, I'll get on it. Anna Lee, just wait. I will be messaging you this week. <laughs> I mean, she is the clear MVP of the entire season, and it doesn't seem close, folks. Josh looks like he disagrees. The oh, Okay, so this is maybe a hot take. I actually, I only disagree because I think Anna Lee partnered with anybody else might be a little feisty. It might be a little tenacious, but... The fact that Steve, I think we have to call out, he is so patient, he listens, he works his butt off. Even, I mean, we saw, at, like, during the marionettes, Anna Lee was yelling at him, no, do it this way. This is what you got to do. This is how it goes. This is this. This is this. And Steve was just saying, uh-huh, yes, yep, yep, and just did his job. He knew his place. He knew his role in the team. And that was really, really admirable. I think that Annalie... That's when he hammered her finger. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he didn't bat a thousand on that, but good. good. However, <laughs> I mean, when you when you put her with someone else, perhaps they might not do as well. And I, I don't want to take anything away from Annalie. She is a strong competitor, but I don't think that we can overlook Steve. I think Steve is really pulling the team just to, just as much. Okay. I have to push back in the sense that Annalie isn't with anybody else, right? And this is part of their success model, is it not? Absolutely. Absolutely. The little right. engine that could and continues to do. Choo-choo. Wow. I uh, really hope this isn't a new trend of us, like, getting some team so wrong, but that is the best team. At Can we also just make note? Now that I've apologized to Annalie, I'm going to insult her again. <laughs> she doesn't know rickshaws? Like, has she seen any previous season of Amazing Race? They always go to India. There's always rickshaws. And Do your research. And she's like this world traveler, too. Yeah. 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 So she's batting 978. <laughs> okay. I mean, she figured it out, but still. I was I was just taken aback when I heard her say, what's a rickshaw? I think that if you go back to our initial episode when we were analyzing each team, one of the, the strengths that, that I think Steve actually said is that they balance each other. They know each other's strengths and they know when they need to step back and they know when they need to step forward. And just like we saw last episode, Anna Lee was like, I can't carry this. And Steve came in and carried it. In the same way, when we're watching this episode, Steve knows that he's not the louder one, he's not the faster one, he's not the um, the the quicker one. But Anna Lee is saying, "Carry that sugar cane quicker." No, hammer this because you're not looking at the details. And yeah, Anna Lee is as leading, but together they are the balance of each other. And I, I have in my notes, "Killing the game." Anna Lee and Steve are killing the game. I really think that her leadership is the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. We were wrong on them and we are, it's clear to us. And I think it's also clear to the rest of the team. It was Joel and Garrett. Mm, yes. Right. The, the mustache beard guys that are bringing up how Steve and Anna Lee. They're very strong. Very strong team. And one more note about them. I was glad that they actually got rewarded for being a first place team this week. Yeah, right. As opposed to the fake out mega leg, but not a mega leg ridiculousness. But did you catch that Anna Lee still counted that as oh. a win? Oh, I did catch yep. that. Did yep. you catch that, Josh? Absolutely. Absolutely. 
And you know what? I don't blame her for counting it. I would count it. Hell too. yeah. Hell yeah. I would count it too. That's a second win. Yeah. No doubt about it. Definitely. And it, it's a, yeah. Well done, Anna Lee. I See, like, that's the kind of thing that just is a standout for me. And I think it's all these things we're talking about is it's not a coincidence that they've won two legs and they've been at the top of the pack the entire time. <clears throat> but some who have not been at the top of the pack. Who's um, that? How was that segue? Uh, <laughs> are our teams, Joe and Ian, Morgan and Lena, in a good old fashioned, India, only India could bring it out of you. Mm. We love, we love Rick, it. Rick Shaw, race off. You love to see it. You really do. Love it. I was on the edge of the couch. Me too. Me too. Great television. Is it because they're in these little vehicles that look like toys? <laughs> like, to, to me, that added to it. Like, they're hanging out of these things. You, it looks like they could run faster. I thought at one point, Joe and Ian were literally going to get out of theirs and start running. <laughs> and they're like, they don't move very fast. And they could get around each car because they're so kind of tiny. And th these vehicles, that they're not a car. And they could maneuver these streets that are crowded a little bit better and then catch the well, catch that the rickshaw. The fact that they passed them oh. was the most exciting part. Oh, it's amazing. But that was fantastic. But there's there's also just like this chaos surrounding them of animals and people and other rickshaws and just India chaos. Shout out India. And to, yes, shout out to India. <laughs> One more thing that I just want to add is that <laughs> I really, really think that part of this was that it wasn't editing. Like the fact that we got to the yeah. finish line and we saw a team and team and team and bing, 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 bing. These races were actually neck and neck. They were actually so close. We all know sometimes we're watching an episode and we're like, Oh my God, that team was four hours later, but they edited it to make it look like there was a close race. No, this episode really was a close race. And that was really exciting. I thought that exact sentiment. Yes, very true. So was this a good episode or was this a good ending to the episode? I thought it was an amazing ending. Everything you're saying, Josh, extremely exciting real time not the editing magic but the i felt like the rest of the episode was kind of slow and like there wasn't much action was it a good ending or was it a good episode a mediocre episode with a great ending that's what i'm going to say it wasn't it wasn't the worst i i still enjoyed watching people struggle through balancing the bowls and everything like i really felt for um cory cory who just <laughs> like i really wonder does he have a pointy head yeah is that it like what is it that he could not get it and i just felt for him because he's been such a strong competitor this whole time and like to see them i thought at one point i was like this i said to tom this could be their demise yeah i thought that them. too and for it to be this that that it causes it oh my god of so I, I really i was i the whole episode i was like really excited and so it was a good episode yeah i, I said it i think she just turned herself josh good episode or a good ending well, I think that you had a good episode. You had the good, I like the sugar cane. I like the balancing on the heads. I like, mm, I think the 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 roadblock was okay. Uh, the mural or the, the miniatures, I thought that was fine. But I thought the strong ending really brought us home. I right. did have a problem with the beginning of the episode. And we're gonna to get to that. Hold that thought because I want to. <laughs> I want to circle back to the rickshaw race. What a tease! Which, yeah, <laughs> stick around. We'll be right back. No, uh, amazing ending. Our two teams, Joe and Ian, Morgan and Lena. Obviously, I think I know who we were rooting for for some reason. Ian. Well, Joe and Ian are my number one, unfortunately. <laughs> so, <laughs> so as this rickshaw race is happening, you literally. 
You were laying down on the couch. Then you were sitting up in the couch. Then you were on the edge of the couch. <laughs> this is what the power rankings do to us. And folks. then collapsed. Yeah. On the couch. No. <laughs> Yeah, it's not easy losing your number one. Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> you know all about that, Tom. Tom, um, what about your number two? Yeah, I oh boy. <laughs> it's not a good not a good situation. Yeah, so. wait. So that they're your number two, Josh, yes? No? No, no they Tom, Tom lost his number one and number two. That, that's why I, I, a little, I had a little, to bring that up. Alexandra and Sheridan. <laughs> The roommate's brother and sister who let me know real quick. Josh had Joni in fourth. So Josh loses his number four team. Nicole loses her number one, and I lose my number three. But let's talk about Joni, and they're out. They are are New Yorkers, so we always have a soft spot for that. We're always rooting for them in that sense. Very graceful losers, I will say. They just had nothing but positivity. And their takeaway was very nice. They're very, they're so in love with each other. And I love love. Not really broken up about it either. Like. No. And they were like already accepting of it in the rickshaw. I feel like I understand the team that got voted out last week, which was Jocelyn and Victor. Jocelyn and Victor. I feel like I know them way better than I know Joe and Ian. I feel like I know even Sheridan and Alexander. Alexander, like way more than I know Joe and Ian. And I think Joe and Ian are kind of forgettable in some ways. Like they didn't really have anything that was about them that I connected with more than they were New Yorkers and they were in love. And like that's exciting, but. It was like, oh, oh, you're you're complete opposites. I don't really see that. You know, I feel like we didn't really dive into them as characters. And one thing that I like to note about the editing is that we see teams demise. We see that they have told their story. We know who they are. And we're like, all right, they're at the bottom of the pack. They're ready to go. But we never got their story. They're kind of, dare I say, boring. And so the end of this, the end of them is like, okay, all right, well, I, I'll miss you, but I, there are other teams that I'm rooting for more. Ninth place in the first leg, seventh in the second, where they forgot the clue and they had to wait. Seventh place in the uh, continuation leg, fourth place in the Vietnam leg, and then out. Dare I add on to that, Josh, that they just kind of, they never got going in the race. They never really felt any success. Nice. They never were in the front. They never were the last team. And with 13, you kind of only can tell so much stories. And there are ultimately some teams that kind of get lost in that. Yeah. Maybe a little bit. Is that was that what you're feeling? Absolutely. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I don't know if they had, like, who who were they? If you had to describe Joe and Ian, who were they? They're two guys that live in Manhattan. There you go. You know, and, and they're married, right? Or like they're a part, they're a couple. What yeah. what else? That's that's I mean, they we, we heard like coffee. Bit, we heard a little bit that they were complete opposites and they're gonna try to like deal with each other throughout the race. But like other than that, I don't know anything else about them. I felt like the only thing we saw them do is just kind of struggle. And mosey along, get ninth place, seventh place, seventh place, and oh, a fourth. Yay, but out. As someone with them at my number one, <laughs> I was really expecting more from them, clearly. But, but uh, they, so what did you get wrong? Well, I don't think, I think with what we're seeing here is that a lot of te these teams are not necessarily making some big blunder. Yeah. Yeah. Like we've seen in past seasons mm -hmm. and like, oh, we can point to they're out because they just couldn't get the choreography or whatever it is. Right. Shout out a room. But <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> true. <this>. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
but with these guys, it's like they're all just they're not really great at it. They're all just mediocre. And because of that, it turns into a foot race at the end because they're all mediocre. And no one's really messed up royally in any way. It's just don't be the last mediocre person. And they happen to be the last one this week. But it could have easily been someone else. Morgan and Lena. I think it should have been them. Nicole, last week, if you had to re-rank, would you keep your same rankings? Oh. Oh. No. Sounds like something we have to do. Is is could that be done? Dun dun dun. <laughs> it's never been done before. We what? are getting crazy here. Mm. No, I think I think it's pretty clear. I mean, there's no way. There's but no if every way. team is mediocre, if every team is mediocre, who do we put in first? I don't mm. I don't know who's gonna win this race. I truly don't. But but what I wanna say is like is it exciting that any team can win or is it not exciting because I truly don't really have a team that I want to win? I like this question. Okay, well, I can tell you for sure that there are two teams that I would for sure rank way higher. I think you could guess. Right, Steve and Annalie. Steve and Annalie. Right, they have to be in your top three. Uh-huh, and... Robin. Robin Corey. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Without a doubt. I agree with you. Josh agrees with Oh my gosh. I will add, I will add, because I have to be the counter, the counterpoint. That <laughs> last week I can probably go on record saying that I think that um Greg and John were not strong competitors. I forgot what it exactly was, but I think they made a a move that I was like, they don't know this race. They're not here for the long term. Oh, it was a matter of which challenge they chose. It just didn't work out. You know what I will say? I think that this week, I think that they maybe are a better team than I thought. Um, they, They did pretty well. And I literally wrote the quote, maybe they are better than I thought, question mark, question mark. Um. So I'm I I would be interested in seeing if they are in your top top threes top fives. They would still be in my top three. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I want to go back to your if everyone's mediocre because I think there's a lot of truth in that, and I think those kinds of challenges like we saw last week with the needle and haystack kind of searching through the tiles in that or in this leg. Uh, we, we we have the same kind of thing. And, and to go on to this idea of like mediocre, I, I don't think that moves the needle. Like, yeah, you can have those kinds of, everybody's kind of equal and have these equalizers and that's great. But like people kind of like having the favorites. Like yeah. people tune out when the favorites lose. Yeah. You know, uh, look at the Major League Baseball, what just happened, right? Oh. My goodness. Exactly. Like, are people like, c- congrats to the Rangers and the Diamondbacks, but like, <laughs> is Major League Baseball really happy about that? I don't think so. Right. And I don't know that there is some great franchise, AKA great team that should still be in there and Jocelyn Victor, but <laughs> ultimately, especially hearing uh, Victor's answers to why he was eliminated and why the tile challenge got the best of him. It seemed like it was just so avoidable. I asked him if he did it a hundred times, how many times would he come in last? And he was like, Oh man, I, 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 it wouldn't have happened. Maybe 50. Like it's such a chance thing. I don't know if that's a good thing, Josh, to answer your question. I don't, I don't know that I really like that. Wow. I want to see the Thoroughbreds run. Yes. I want to see Secretariat at Belmont. I want to see Boston Robin Amber. Now we're talking. Demon. Now we're talking. Hey, what's up? It's Tom from Tribal Council Blog. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on all our social media accounts and our YouTube channel. Back to the episode. At the beginning of the race, they're all flying to India. There's no airport scene. And it's all aboard. Everybody's on the same flight. It's all equal. The departure times to even start the leg were within 36 minutes from 1st to 10th. The floor is yours, Josh. You know, 
I empathized with Steve and Annalie so hard in the beginning of this episode. And they were like, we came in first that we should be in first. We should have a lead. We worked our asses off the last leg. And you know what? Now we're all equal. Now we're all equal. Now we have to fight just as much. And I, I don't love that they all started out equal. I think that there is um, a combativeness within myself because I think because they started out all equal, we had such an exciting ending and we had every team really finishing close and we had any team that could have gone home. But there is a part of me that is like this leg, this race is a journey, right? It's about each leg and try to keep getting ahead and ahead and ahead and stop microdosing into one episode. Because once you boil it down to one episode, then yeah, anyone can go home at any time. And I, I think that for the the viewer, it is actually more exciting to be able to root for teams over the course of the season versus over the course of an hour and a half. Yeah, I want to see teams have success. I want to see teams pull away. I want to see teams do well. I want to see teams win legs by hours. I do. And if every three, four episodes, you know, there's an all board, there's an equalizer, all right, it's a wrinkle into the race. Again, to go back to a, maybe a football reference, like, yeah, the Chiefs are going to start winning games. They're going to win games. They got to put Ws on the board because they're the best team, right? But if if it's this like, oh, you only can play Patrick Mahomes for uh, half the drives, well, then it's going to like you're trying to equal equal it out. And it's like, no, I want to see the best team run away. I want to see them score. I want to see them – be productive. And the same thing here on the race. Like I want to see, I want to see how much better Annalie and Steve are. I think we do see it to this point, but in a stretch, I think you're saying that Josh, right? Like to be able to stretch the lead, how much more can they get to? And if, if it comes down to, Oh, they got the better flight. And, but then the, the it wasn't open until six in the morning. And then the people caught up, the other teams caught up. Like it's like that natural, barrier versus put them all on the same flight everybody's equal i think that kind of hits differently yeah and i think also because it was we were kind of told that we were gonna get og amazing race airport scenes Uh, and then this felt taken away and it like wasn't really explained they just kind of grazed over they're all on the same flight. Yeah, and only maniacs like us are really gonna ding this, or maybe not. But we're gonna ma- we're gonna maniac this out, and like, well, we are maniacs. So yeah, the maniac, the maniac. We still haven't had a true uh, airport. I missed my flight. Please begging to get onto that flight. Let me in. Let me get past this person. We haven't had that OG amazing race element and I am craving it. I really wanted to see, and we, we asked this question, three of us kind of like all said it when they were at the travel agency and they were all battling for that. Cause that seems so maybe the taste of nostalgia, but also there was like a competitive fire there, right? That I don't know that you can really create in any other way. So maybe we'll get more of that as we go forward. I hope we get more airport. I think we here at the Re-Race Schools podcast clearly love the airport piece of it. Well, I just love in general inter-team drama. Right. Intra-team drama. Like we got a little bit of it where... Uh, a I drop. That- Todd and Ashley were running up the hill and Robin and Chelsea were doing the keep your head down. Don't tell them anything. Don't tell them anything. And I perked up. Yeah. I made a note about it. Uh, Oh, (laughs) but that's it. That's all we get for like the drama. Right. Because Todd has made his kind of character out to be this guy more than once. Right. Is that what you're He's been this guy who's trying to, oh, if I get ahead of you, this, that, the other, and smooth talking and trying to schmooze. And it was good to see somebody else kind of stick it to him. Well, and it, I also just want to add that it's not the only team that has rubbed a team the wrong way with Chelsea and Robin, because Anna Lee 
did not like that Chelsea wouldn't help her during the tiles. And then Chelsea found the tile and became in first place, which is probably even worse for Annalie. Speaking of first place, oh, totally. after Steve and Annalie come in first place, we have Phil drop a little bit of a tease right on Steve and Annalie. Mm -hmm. And then the group, the second and third, and then that big group that finished with the U-turn vote. Mm -hmm. Good old Phil, the rock star legend himself, with his fedora on, his, his lavender shirt, one button more undone, like, look, just crushing it. Keep up the good work, Phil. It's unbelievable. This guy is just, wow. And you should a wait. Star. And wait till you hear Jocelyn and Victor's ringing endorsement of this guy. <laughs> Stay tuned for that. Coming soon to the Re Schools feed. The U-turn vote. It's a blind vote. They're gonna vote maybe early in an episode, and then it's gonna happen later in the episode. And whoever the vote is, is that's who it is. Truly, I have no idea. I have no idea how this is gonna happen. And I, I think that's possibly exciting. But I would not like it if it was before the, the race or the, before they start the leg, which is the way that I perceived it to be, just like what you're saying. Okay. And if that okay. is the case, if that is the case, then I think it is kind of just like, which team do you hate and which team do you want to be at the back of the pack? And it is going to be the like, everybody hates Chelsea and Robin and Chelsea and Robin have to do the U-turn twice and ha ha ha, that sucks. Or, that, ain't, that ain't happening. Or is it Wow, uh, Steve and Anna Lee, they're a really strong team. Let's put their name down. Ding, 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 ding. And I think that Joel and Garrett pulled yeah. that little teaser out of their beard mustache and dropped that little gem on us uh, to do a little foreshadowing here, folks. That's my prediction. U-turn vote, blind vote, Steve and Anna Lee, whoosh, you turned Guarantee it next week. Mark it down. I hope that they do it mid race. I hope that they don't just do it before the, the the race starts because then it's all based on what is based on the pit stop. It's based on the past races and not about playing the game, which is what we care about. And we've talked about this. This is why we like Amazing Race because they are actually playing the game and making strategic decisions during the game and not the producers imposing some stupid fucking boundary where they need to choose what they have to who they hate the most, who they want to be penalized. Like, that's not cool. What I want to see is a team that's going to actually vote someone self off because they're in a certain place in the race and how it's going. I want to see actual gameplay. I don't want to see producers getting involved in who is going to win a million dollars. I want to see the strategy move. I want to see someone pull it off effectively. Not a popularity contest. Not a popularity contest, no. And that's what we talk about. That's why we like Amazing Race. Like, And Survivor is amazing because the producers have a say and they have a choice and they really control this game. When, when do idols get played? When do they come out? What is the stipulations of this? Amazing Race is not like that. Amazing Race is in your own hands. Don't give us some imposing boundary that's going to now change something before, after the, like during the game, before the game. It, it's just, it feels so lame. Hey, it's Tom from Tribal Council Blog. Thanks for listening, and be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on Instagram, all our other social media, and our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. All right, folks, so we're going to close out this podcast by crossing the finish line. Josh, start us off. My favorite part of this episode was when they had to balance plates on their head, and oh. Ashley says... I was so good at volleyball, so I'm going to be good at this challenge. And then <laughs> John and Greg says, I, I used to break dance, so I'm going to be so good at this challenge. And then Jeremy <laughs> looked like a troll with his uh, shoulders in his ears as he was trying to balance these <laughs> plates. Brilliant. Thank you, Amazing Race Producers. I will cross the finish line and say Morgan and Lena – it's amazing to me that they are still in this thing. It's amazing. They have played their hand about as worse as anybody can. They get the express pass and they basically lit it on fire. 
they get to the big picture uh, detour where they had to dress up in the costumes, grab some props in this scavenger hunt and be part of a life-size mural and make the picture with little differences from the little model next to it, come alive and then avoid the experts saying, no, <laughs> right? And Morgan and Lena, they do that for, as they say, for the 25 minute rule, but they're really there for two hours. And then they just go to the other detour over to the dialed up. They somehow create the doll, get in the rickshaw race, and beat out Joe and Ian, and it just, ugh, come on. I don't see it. I can't imagine that they make it much further. If they're a cat, they're on their ninth life, and I, I thought that this would have ended a long time ago. They really set us up to believe that the next episode is when we are going to find out finally about this U-turn. And so I'm looking forward to seeing how that's all going to play out. <laughs> all right, folks, before we close out this podcast, let's go to our power rankings, which is getting grimmer by the week here, folks. <laughs> well, OK, let's start with the good. Uh, Josh does it again, deducts four off his already first place front running score to bring him to a low of 60, keeping him in first. Nicole sees a tough loss of her number one team, Joe and Ian. She joins me in the cellar there and the uh, sadness of having your number one team out. Going to uh, still in second place, though, it's 70 points. And your boy Tom is just absolutely bottom of the barrel here, folks. My number one, my number two, and now my number three team, Joe and Ian, out. Third place, 72 points. Uh, I did get the, my number 13 off the board, though. Somehow I got that right. But I would have been better off literally taking my entire rankings and flipping them upside down. So <laughs> that breaks my heart. But congratulations, Josh, again, continuing to run away with it. It's going to take a miracle for somebody to beat him uh, or maybe a Robin Corey win. We'll see if that happens. But thank you to Josh. Thank you to Nicole. Thank you to all of you for listening and watching the re Wolves podcast and supporting us all season long. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on Instagram, Facebook, X, YouTube, and check out tribalcouncilblog.com for Survivor 45 content also. We appreciate it. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.